Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. There's a warning here. It says, therefore, my beloved, flee idolatry. Should we really flee from things that we love more than we love God? Should we flee? It doesn't say just like tolerate or leave it in your life. It says get away from it. Fleeing means move away from that thing that is an idol. And Paul, he says this, I speak to you as wise men. You judge what I say. He says, it's not the cup of blessing with which we bless the uh, sharing of the blood of Christ, you know, talking about communion. Isn't that cup that we take of the, to remember the Lord? And is not the bread that we take of, uh, 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 that we break a sharing of the body of Christ? Isn't that something special we do when we take communion? Now, we'll be taking communion. Usually we do it the first Sunday of the month, but I'm going to wait because in the next chapter is the part where we have the instituting of the Lord's Supper that Paul talks about. Let's do it in time with what the scripture layout is here. So in just a, in just a couple of weeks, we'll be coming to that part in, in chapter 11. But he says, since there is one bread, and we who are, are many are now one body, we all partake of that one bread. We all are just partakers of the Lord, is what he's saying. Now look at the nation Israel. He says, not those that eat the sacri- uh, he says, are not those that eat the sacrifices are they not sharers in the altar? You know, like the Levites, they got to eat. They, they, they actually made them, they had to do all the work of giving the offerings at the altar. Did, do you guys know where they got their lunch? From the offerings. When the offering was done being offered to the Lord, they, they got a, their portion was given to them. Basically, they barbecued the, the animal before the Lord, the smoke ascended. And, it, and God said the smell of the smoke was like, the, was like in Revelation, the prayers of the saints ascending to him. It was God saying, you know, this is your prayers coming to me. Now, I, I don't know, for those of you that are barbecue aficionados, does my wife, she likes it when I go out and I, I cook the meat and I come in and she says, she smells me. Oh, you have eau de camado. The smell of the smoke, you know. She says, it smells good on a man, you know. We come in with, the, we were out there barbecuing the meat. You got to, I try to tell my son, son, you got to learn to cook on the barbecue, you know. It's a, some of the girls like the smell, you know, when, on, on us. You know, they don't want to go out there and get on them. They want it on you. That means you did the work and you brought it in. And Paul is saying, listen, when the, when the, when the guys go and do the barbecuing for the Lord, don't they get to partake of the barbecue of the Lord? Don't they get to eat of that, that, that offering? And the answer is rhetorically, they already knew the answer was yes. They do. But he says, what do I mean then? That the things that are sacrificed to an idol, is it anything? Or that an idol is anything? What about, now they're in Corinth. Did they have false gods that they had their own barbecues for, the, for their false gods? Yes. They actually had these little statues of their gods, and they had their little corner stand where they, they actually, I don't know if you know their culture, but they actually would, people would pay to make an offering to the false god, and then when they were done with the, you know, cutting the, the neck of the animal and bleeding the blood and making the offering, they would take the meat of the animal, go out back and cook it. And Paul, Paul says, you know, that the meat that was offered is just meat. And to him, the little stone statue or whatever that they worshipped it's no God at all. So to Paul, he's like, look, I don't have any problem. It's just meat. But listen to his attitude. He's going to say something very interesting. He goes on and he says, now when these things are sacrificed to an idol, is that idol really anything? Is that hunk of wood or that carved stone? Does that make the meat somehow bad? He goes, no. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, he says, they do sacrifice them to demons. And he says, and and, and not to God. And he goes, and I don't want you to become sharers in demons. I don't want you to, don't go participate in their sacrificing. 
He says, and you can't drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You can't partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. In other words, you don't get to do both. Pick one or the other. Pretty straightforward. He says, or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? We're not stronger, he says, than, than he is, are we? He says, all things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. All things are lawful, he says, but not all things edify. And he says, so then let no one seek his own good, but rather seek the good of his neighbor. Now eat anything, he says, that's sold in the marketplace, in the meat market. But he said, eat it without asking any questions. For your conscience sake. You don't go into the meat market and go, hey, was this offered to a demon? Because if you find out it's offered to a demon, are you supposed to eat it? No. But if you don't know, and you just go in, hey, that looks like okay meat. How much? A pound, you know? And they scoop it up and you take it home. You don't, he goes, your conscience is clear. It's just meat. Now this is interesting because Paul says, eat anything in the meat market without asking questions. For your conscience. Don't ask, did you offer this to a demon? He says, for the earth is the Lord's. He quotes the psalm. I love this. Psalm 34, or 24, I'm sorry. Psalm 24, the first, first verse of the psalm. The earth is the Lord, and how much of it belongs to him? All that it contains belongs to the Lord. He says, now if anyone's an unbeliever and invites you to, to and they want you to go to their house and eat, he says, Eat anything they set before you without asking questions for your conscience sake. Don't say, hey, did you guys happen to sacrifice this to a demon? Because what if they did? You asked or, or they just volunteered. Hey, I'm serving you this dish and by the way, we worship this false god and we made sure we made our sacrifice to it before we brought it to the table. What are you supposed to do then? Now, you probably don't run into that too much in American culture. <laughs> but how many of you have traveled abroad and, and seen that this is actually practiced in other countries where they do sacrifices in their temples before they, you know, right, right next to the food shack? And you wonder, where'd this food come from? Oh, it's right from the back of the temple there. The, the people went in the front, they made their sacrifice. After the sacrifice is done, they go outside and there is the food being served. Paul's Paul knew that this was something they were, they had written to him, what do we do about this? Should we eat the food? I mean, it's, yeah, it's still, I mean, and I hate to say it, but they'd be like, you know, it's really good food. Should I eat it? And Paul says, listen to this. He says, if anyone says to you, this meat was sacrificed to idols, do not eat it. Now, why? He said, don't eat it for the sake of the one who informed you, for their conscience sake. He says, I don't mean for your own conscience, but rather the other man's. He says, why is my freedom judged by another man's conscience? He says, if I partake with thankfulness, why am I slandered concerning the things for which I give thanks? Paul was of the attitude, look, that, that statue is nothing. It's not even a god. That's still really good ribs, you know? And they cooked them really good over some nice wood, you know? And the smoke smell is like killing me. I want to go eat it. Now, Paul would just go, that piece of wood that was carved into their God is not a God at all. So for his own conscience, he could eat the ribs. Except, I told you, Paul had an attitude that, who's, he says, who are you supposed to be looking out for? Y yourself? No, for others. What if you got somebody there who came from that background where they actually did that sacrificing and they know it's to a demon and it would really stumble them. They, they would think, oh what, you believe in their demon too and you, you honor their demon by eating the meat? Should you eat the meat? No. Don't do it. It's not, it's not worth stumbling your brother. Don't do it. Paul says, look, what then? You eat whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Remember, we're just to glorify God with our bodies. It, and he says, give no offense either to a Jew or a Greek or to the church of God, just as I also please men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of the many, so that they might be saved. Well, let's just pray. Lord, we pray for Angie. 
just as we prayed for Dot and all of the ones, Lord, we love and care about that. Different things, Deb, Bartlett, fighting uh, some kind of cold thing going around. We just pray for our whole body of believers here, Lord. And not just us, but all of the body of Christ throughout our islands, that you would strengthen us by your Holy Spirit. You would comfort us. You would touch us with your, with your power, Lord, to restore us, Lord, where we're weak. In the ports, Lord, where we're, where we're strong, help us be reined in and led by your Holy Spirit. Help us submit to you. And all that we do and all that we say, use us, Lord, we pray, for your glory. Like Paul said, for all, for the glory of the Lord, he did whatever he did. May we have that same heart and have that same attitude. And in Christ's name, we ask these things. And everyone that agree with me said, Amen. Amen. May you go. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.